if you haven't noticed by now, um, our theme for this year is Faith in Thee in 23. And our theme uh, verse in the text that we're going to look at this morning is verse 6, but I'm going to um, read and start in verse 1. So if you would uh, stand with me for the reading of God's word, uh, just out of respect, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Everybody loves a good report card, amen? How do you get that? Living by faith. Uh, verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Uh, God spoke them into existence, amen? amen? He spoke the time, he spoke the matter, he spoke, uh, spoke everything into existence. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Verse 5, by Enoch, uh, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. Before, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And here our theme verse for this morning. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I do ask that you would uh, come in our presence this morning, Holy Spirit, that you would touch our hearts on each and every person here. Help us to uh, pay attention to what is being said and help us to have faith um, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to trust God every step of the way uh, as we walk through this narrow road uh, that we're on with the Lord uh, in 2023. And may we grow each and every day to be closer to you and draw near to you in faith, believing that you can do the impossible. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. If I were to ask you this morning, if you live a life of faith in God, how would you respond? Or if we were to sit down and, and, and have a meal or a cup of coffee and I say, how is your faith in God? Many of you would say, of course I have faith in God. I, I trust God. I'm, I'm leaning on him. Haven't you seen my bumper sticker? Jesus is my co-pilot. Right? I come to church almost every Sunday morning. I, yeah, I have pretty good faith in God, but... Often the depth of our faith isn't revealed until challenges come into our life. Uh, it's during the challenging times, even in which we live is a challenging time, that the level of our faith is then revealed. Amen. Uh, throughout the Bible, men and women have been challenged to not only believe in God, but to act on that belief. Uh, as Grandma says, the proof is in the pudding. Amen. And and so uh, and and this is supposed to be done in only one way. Uh, the Bible does not simply offer a a list of suggestions. Uh, God doesn't give us a suggestion on how to live our lives. He says, you know, if you feel like it, you can live this certain way. Uh, if it's convenient for you, you can live this certain way. If it doesn't cost you too much money, you can live this way. Um, if, 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 it, if it only takes you, you know, this far, you can live this kind of way. If it doesn't cause you to uh, move halfway across the world, you can live this kind of way. But if, if working with God and walking with God is going to cost something. Amen. And so God doesn't submit a few ways in which we choose one in which to follow him with our lives. Uh, God doesn't um, uh, uh, have, you know, here's, here's the best of three options. Pick which one you want to do. Uh, kind of like they do for, uh, I believe it's the Navy or the Air Force. They say, hey, pick three duty stations. Which one do you want to go to? Uh, God is kind of like the Marines. It's like, you get what you get, you know. <laughs> and this is what we want for you. And so God doesn't give us three options saying, which is the best one for you and pick one. God doesn't do that with us. Amen. He gives us instructions on how to Amen. please him and be rewarded by him. Amen. And so the king, eternal, the immortal, the invisible, the almighty God and the all only wise God has only one method that pleases him uh, and that rewards us by, he rewards us by, and that, my friends, is faith. Amen. Faith. Faith is what God has chosen for the believer in Christ to live by and for the sinner to come by. Amen. In the verse in verse 6, he starts out with that word, but. 
And but you always is, is a, it suggests a contrast with a heart uh, 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 attitude of faith, like that of Enoch that we just read about in verse 5. Uh, by faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. And we can go down the list throughout the whole chapter. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, David, Samuel. Everybody uh, in the Bible is walking with God and pleasing God um, and being rewarded by God by faith. But in verse, uh, verse 5 there, it says, uh, before his translation, the end part of verse 5, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. Gen Genesis 5, 24, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Amen. He walked with God. Without such a faith, one cannot walk with God or even please God without faith. Amen. In fact, uh, not only can we not walk with God, we can do absolutely nothing that pleases God uh, when we do it apart from faith. Many people get caught in the trap of doing rather than being. Uh, many, be, many people get caught into this idea of I need to do than rather be. Uh, mistaking religious activity for the right relationship. And we could meet that stuff all the time. We can knock on a door this afternoon. Hi, I'm, I'm with Cactus Point Baptist Church. We're in the school over here. Just invite people out to church. For some of you in this room, that would be frightening to do. But really, you just give them the track and say, well, do you guys go anywhere? Oh, yeah, we go to Sister Mary, St. Catherine's. Okay, well, you know, well, are you going to heaven when you die? Uh, well, you know, I'm a good person, and uh, I donate to the poor, and, uh, and I, serve, I serve, you know, uh, I do the prayer candles, and I do all these different things. Okay, we're not mistaking religious activity for relationship. Amen. Many people get caught into that trap of doing religious things, and not focus on the relationship, which is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, without faith, their doing is not pleasing God. Others think that they can please God because they're born into a Christian family. Or because they go to a Bible-believing church. Or they've been baptized in water. But none of those things please God Amen. if they are a part from faith. Amen. Uh, even even you this morning, you may be doing some kind of activity for the Lord, but not be doing it in faith, and God is not pleased. You may be doing it within your own strength, which is pretty much what we all got to do. Is someone else going to use my strength? No, no. But in my weakness, then I'm made strong. Amen. The Bible says, but without. That without as a preposition means apart from. Amen. For example, in John 1, 3, the Bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Uh, another example, in, in, we're in Hebrews. Go to chapter 4 real quick. We're looking at the preposition of the word, or the word without. Without. Uh, just as Jesus was without sin. He says in verse 15 of Hebrews chapter 4. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet, say it, without, without sin. sin. All right? Uh, another example is Ephesians 2.12. The Bible says that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. So we see this preposition back in Hebrews eleven six. without means apart from. So without Christ, we have no creation. Apart from Christ, we have no creation. Amen. Without Christ, who is absolutely without sin, we have no mediator. We have no mediator. Right? I was trying to explain to Hara what a mediator is. I said if mommy and daddy got into an argument and there was a third party individual in between, he, he would kind of even things out a little bit. Right? That, that person that should be in between in our Christian relationships is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Is lubricated with grace and love and joy Amen. and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and kindness and meekness and love. Amen. Amen. 
Uh, but the mediator, the Bible says that the one mediator, he says there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. We don't pray to Mary. We don't sacrifice to saints. I am a saint of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, I, and I go through the high priest, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the mediator. So without, without Christ, there's no creation. Without Christ, there is no mediator. Uh, and without Christ, we have no hope. Amen. So apart from Christ and without Christ, we have nothing and are headed for destruction. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews uh, 9.27, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment, there is no second chances. Therefore, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. There is no acceptance from God of anyone outside of, apart from, or without the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For by him were all things created. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Amen. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby ye must be saved. That's, right. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that um, heareth my word and believeth on him hath, that sent me hath everlasting life, and Amen. shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That is done by faith. The Amen. Bible says in, in Colossians, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, so we could be made the righteousness of Amen. God in him. Right. I am not righteous. I have no righteousness. There is none righteous. Amen. Amen. No, not one. Uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. And because of that, I have to pay for an eternity in the pit of hell forever Amen. and ever and ever. But God in his, in his grace and his mercy uh, shed on us abundantly through our Lord Jesus Christ and renewing and uh, washing of regeneration through the Holy Ghost, which Amen. he shed on us abundantly through our Lord Jesus Christ. He came on the cross. Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And if I understand that I am a sinner, that I am in, 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 uh, headed towards judgment, and that that judgment is for me to spend eternity in hell, I do deserve to go there because I'm not righteous. I'm condemned uh, because I haven't believed in the only name of the only begotten Amen. son of God. I, I'm worthy of going there. And God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins, who am absolutely unworthy. I have no worth in and of myself, save the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for me and bought my sin. Amen. He bought my liberty. He purchased my redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. And so when I come to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, I cry out to him. The Bible says, if thou believest in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus was absolutely perfect. He was absolutely righteous. He had no sin of his own. He didn't have to pay for any sin, but he came willingly to pay for my sin to Amen. atone. Praise God for the atonement. At one with the Lord Jesus Christ. At Amen. one with God. Webster says that without, uh, as a preposition, is used as a function word to indicate the absence or lack of something or someone. Uh, the only something or someone of which the true, eternal, thrice holy God approves of uh, uh, is faith in his Son whom he hath sent, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Another point that I want to give to you guys this morning uh, uh, regarding without faith, the Bible says in verse 6, Hebrews 11, but without faith, is that we cannot perform um, um, uh, enough good works to please God. Amen. Stated another way, our, our works, no matter how abundant, can never compensate for a lack of faith. Amen. Never. The Egyptians were there in, in Hebrews. Go to verse 29. The Egyptians could not move in such a path as this. They couldn't move in a path of faith. They moved on because they saw the way open. If you remember, um, in Exodus, the children of Israel are standing at the Red Sea. And uh, they said, what do we do? And, and God says, tell them to go forward. And, and, and put out the rod. And God brought back the east wind and parted the seas. And they walked on dry ground. 
That's not a Bible story. It's a biblical account. Amen. They're finding chariots wheels in the Red Sea. They're Amen. finding fossils in the Red Sea. Amen. It is a biblical fact. It's a historical fact Amen. that the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. Amen. Now, where they actually did it, we have no idea. But we know that it happened. Amen. We know Amen. that it happened. And so the, the Egyptians, when the sea was open, they realized, you know, once the fire, the pillar of fire was removed, they saw the way open. They visualized it with their eyes and they said, let's get them. And they went after them. And the Bible says in verse 29, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. They, meaning the children of Israel, Amen. which the Egyptians, here's an interesting word, a saying to do were drowned. A saying means that they tested. It was the trial. It was an experiment. It was an effort to accomplish something. They were trying to accomplish something, and they were drowned. When people uh, say, when people try to do what faith can only accomplish, the only, they only encounter defeat and confusion. Amen. When someone tries to get to heaven... Uh, by their own good works and their uh, saying, they're trying to go by these eyes, they only encounter defeat and confusion. Amen. They only encounter defeat and confusion. Uh, 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 and, and, and likewise, the Christian who is viewing things through these eyes will only encounter defeat and confusion. Amen. Uh, but we have to get to the word of God to look, uh, to, to look to God's word and to trust God with these eyes. Yes. To understand what God is wanting us to do. Uh, God, I, 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 you know, sometimes I wish, and maybe this is just me, I, I hope you guys can relate. Uh, sometimes I wish God could just send me like a three second video clip of what the next step is going to be. Amen. Right? And it's just like God sends you a text message, bing, oh, it's God. All right. All right, everybody, fat family, gather around. Gather. We're only going to see it one time. You, don't, you can't record it. Boom. Okay, that's what I need to do. That's great. You know, He does that for us in His Word. Amen. God, God, didn't, God didn't choose for us to watch a video and see it. He chose us to trust his word. Amen. He says, hey, this is the next step. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really uh, fully know uh, because then it wouldn't be a faith. If, if we knew fully uh, what was going to happen, uh, then, I mean, really, is it, is it that much of, of a step of faith? Well, no. I mean, we know fully what's going to happen when we die. and We can have eternal security and know that we're going to go to heaven when we die. Amen? Amen. But we don't have a picture of heaven. We, we don't have a little chart that says, you know, these are the these are the, what the mansions look like. We don't, we don't have a, a floor plan, right? Uh, and he's the master builder. Uh, but the path along that God calls his people to walk is one which the natural man can never walk. He can never tread. The natural man can never tread the path of the Christian. Amen. Why? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Neither neither can it walk in the ways of God because faith is the great characteristic principle of God's kingdom. And faith alone can enable us to walk in God's Amen. ways. Uh, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. Why? It, it glorifies God exceedingly when we move on with him as it were blindfolded. Uh, why? Because 2 Corinthians says, for we, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We don't do what the Egyptians do and go down the, uh, go across the Red Sea because we see that it's open. We trust God and take him at his word. Amen. And so when we do that, it proves that we have more confidence in his eyesight than our own. Amen. Uh, you know, um, uh, in the military, you have the regular infantry and you have everybody that supports the infantry. That's everybody's job. And um, <clears throat> with that, you have artillery. And artillery has no idea where all those infantry guys are out on the battlefield. And the artillery is relying on one man to give them coordinates to fire upon. If that man gives the wrong coordinates, he kills his own men, which happens in combat. But he can't see. So just like the artillery man way back over here is pulling that little string and sending that big shell way out over there. And to come in on the enemy, whoa, bow. Just like he's trusting in the coordinates for the man to give for him to fire, that's what we do with God. Amen. That's what God does with us. We're trusting what God says so that we can take out the enemy. We're trusting what God says so that we can move forward by faith. Amen. We're trusting what God says in his word to do to take that next step. Amen. 
And so I know that if God is looking out for me, I may very well close my eyes and move on in a holy calmness and stability because I trust his word. Amen. In, 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 in combat theaters, there is a sentry or, or the Bible term, a watchman. A watchman would be high up on the tower or on the city walls and he'd be watching. That's what he's supposed to do. And if he's sleeping, then he's going to be killed, right? He's going to kill everybody else. So uh, the watchman would be at his post. For what reason? So that everybody else could sleep quiet. Amen. How much more can we rest in the perfect security in the one who never slumbers nor sleeps? Amen. And has his eye upon us and his everlasting arms always around us. Amen. We can trust God. Uh, faith is not a leap in the dark. Uh, faith is based on facts of God's word. Amen. Upon the authority of God's word. It's not a leap in the dark. It's a leap in the book. That's what it is. Uh, faith, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 11, uh, verse 6, he says, But without faith. Faith is a firm persuasion. A conviction based upon the hearing of God's word is true. Amen. Eternal salvation comes only through belief in Jesus Christ in no other way. Amen. That's through faith. Faith is confidence in God that leads to obedience to God, as we will see, or as you can read the rest of the chapter. Faith, uh, faith in God uh, is confidence in God that leads to obedience to God. Amen. That is what God is pleased with, is when we trust him, when we take him at his word, and then act upon it. When we act upon it. Faith is really believing God himself. Amen. Faith is believing God himself, that, that God will keep his promises, that no matter the circumstances and despite the circumstances and difficulties that seem to be to the contrary, we can take God at his word. Amen. Why? Because he is faithful. Amen. Why? Because he is true. Why? Because he is wisdom. Why? Because he's eternal. Amen. Faith is believing God's word and acting upon it. There's nothing about God that makes it impossible for men to believe. There's, think about that. There's nothing about God that makes it impossible for men to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty is with the human will. Amen. God may be wanting you to go this way, and the human will says, but I, I like this, this, and this, and, and this is on the table, and that's on the table, and that's on the table, but God says, I don't want that for you. Just stay where you are. Amen. Or God says, I want this for you. Move over here. Right? Amen. I don't want you to take this one. I want you to have that one. Anybody see those? You know, they take the thing. Pick which one you want. God says, no, I, I, I'm clearly showing you this one. That's the choice. But that's not beautiful, Lord. I want, I want, I want the nice one. Well, this is, this is what you have right now. Be okay with it. Be content with it. Amen? Well, well God, you don't understand. I, I really, I, I, I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay with this one. You know, it's, it's, it's a little pretty. But I would really rather have this one. God says, I'd really ha rather have you be this one. Amen. Hmm. When missionary John Patton uh, was translating scripture for the South Sea Islanders in the um, Pacific, he was unable to find a word in their vocabulary for the concept of believing and trusting or having faith. He couldn't find a word for that when he was translating uh, the scriptures for them. He had no idea how he would convey that to them. And then one day while he was in his hut translating, a native came running up the stairs into uh, Patton's study, and he uh, took a chair. I'm going to take this chair for a second. And he came into this study, and he runs down, and he plops his whole life in here. And Patton looks at him, and, you know, he's trying to figure out how he's going to use this word for faith, and he, he said to Patton, it's so good to rest my whole weight in this chair. John Patton looked at him and says, what did you say? He said, it is so good to rest and put my body and my whole weight in this chair. And the word came to him. Faith is resting your whole weight on God. Amen. That word went into the translation of their New Testament to help bring the civilization to a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing is putting your whole weight on God. Amen. Notice he says in uh, verse 6, Hebrews eleven six. 6, but without faith it is impossible 
impossible. What does that mean? Everybody knows what that means. It means it's not possible. <laughs> it's without the possibility of happening. Uh, it's incapable of being or occurring or incapable of being done. And then he says, in reference to that, what, what's impossible? It's impossible to please him. Amen. It's impossible to gratify uh, entirely. It's impossible to gratify God entirely without faith. Amen. It means to behave in a manner that causes another to be pleased. Uh, it means to give pleasure or satisfaction to someone else. Uh, the idea of pleasing is to uh, excite agreeable emotions in another. Uh, for example, in Hebrews 13, if you turn right over there, just flip a page. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, the Bible says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But... To do good and to communicate, forget not, with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Amen. Praise that pleases God is what? The fruit of our lips. The fruit of our lips. Not just our thoughts, but is spoken out unto the Lord. The fruit Amen. of our lips. The fruit of our lips. Now, that verb for please is the same that was used in Hebrews 11, please. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that verb for please to um, excite agreeable emotions in another, uh, to cause another one to be pleased, that same verb is used in verse 5. In the last four words of verse 5, that he pleased God. When I told you in the beginning that Genesis 5.24, when he's speaking about Enoch, what did God say in his word? That Enoch walked with God. That's the same word transla translated in the, in the coin Greek here as God used in Genesis 5, 24. Pleased God. Walked with God. How did Enoch walk with God? By faith. Amen. So right there, God has given us a complete picture that what pleases God when we walk with God by faith. Amen. Without faith in God, without confidence in God... In his fidelity, in his truth, in his wisdom, in his sovereignty, uh, and even in his promises, without faith, it is impossible, absolutely, utterly impossible to gratify him, Amen. to please him. Uh, it is insufficient. It, 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 and the same is true in other senses as well. Think of this with me, for example. It's impossible for a child to please his father unless he has confidence in him. It's impossible for a wife to please her husband or a husband or wife unless they have confidence in each other. Amen. Um, it, it, the same is, is true of God. Uh, we cannot be pleased. I'm sorry, I missed, I missed one. If there is a distrust or jealousy in a relationship, if there's distrust and there's jealousy on either part, there is discord and uh, uh, misery. I was going to say disunity. But that's a good one, too. If there's distrust and jealousy on either part of the aisle in a relationship, there is discord and misery. Whether that's your spouse, whether that's a friend, whether that's a church member, whatever, ha whatever have you, we cannot be pleased with a professed friend. We all have those. A professed friend unless he or she has such confidence in us to believe what we're saying yeah. or the promises that we keep. Right? If, there, if there is a lack of trust, if there's a lack of confidence, if there is a, a lack of, um, uh, 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 or if there is a distrust, if there's a jealousy, whatever have you, uh, there will be a, uh, it will be very hard to please your friend or for your friend to please you. Amen. Right? It, it, it's, it, it would be very hard if, if I didn't have full confidence in someone to share my heart with them. That's why I tell young people today, and anytime I meet them, even when we were at a beach on vacation, I was talking to these young girls, 16 years old, talking about some boyfriends. I just turned around and said, ladies, I was like, give your heart to your parents because you don't want a broken heart. Amen. There's no point, and I tell my boys this, I was like, there's no point to open this up and give that lady or that girl, that person you're probably not even going to marry, all your heart 
and say, go ahead, do with it what you will. They'll stomp on it and squash it out. But your parents, by the grace of God, hopefully will hold that for you and will protect your heart. Amen. That's just a side note, but it's good. So if you see young people, tell them, make sure your mommy, <laughs> tell a six-year-old, make sure your mommy, tell a six-year-old, tell a 15-year-old, tell a 14-year-old, tell a 10-year-old, tell a nine-year-old, make sure your parents have your heart. Amen. That means that we have to have good relationships. That means there has to be confidence. That means there has to be unity. That means there has to be some love. Why? Because a man or a woman will rip your heart apart. Amen. Then when you bring that into your marriage, your marriage is messed up because you have no confidence. Say, well, I remember what happened the last time. I gave my whole heart to her. I gave my whole heart to him. And they squashed it. They ripped it out. They shot it up in the air with a shotgun and it's blown to pieces. I can't trust her. I can't trust him. Keep your heart. Amen. Let God have your heart. Amen. But your parents have your heart if you're not married yet. Why? Because they'll protect it. Amen. I don't even know where I was going with that, but it's good preaching. Amen. It's really quiet in here. Praise the Lord. We cannot be pleased with a friend or a spouse unless that they have a confidence in us and we have a confidence in them to believe what we say or our promises. Right, I was telling my, my boys, for some reason, they always think of the Bonuelas when we talk about anniversaries because they remember the 50th that we celebrated. And they said, so you guys are going to have a, 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 you know, you're going to get married. Like they kept pointing to our anniversary and saying, it's wedding day. I'm like, no, 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 we're just celebrating wedding day. Uh, then we're just, we're just, they're like, well, yeah. And so we, 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 we're, we're driving up and, and, and Harlan says, uh, what did he say? I forgot what he said. He said, um, oh, we're gonna, he said, how long are we going to be at Nana's house? Like three years? Oh, man, I'll be really sad to see, not see you guys. I'm like three years? I was like, dude, we're just going out to eat. And so we came back and, and we were talking about, I said, you know, a marriage is a covenant. It's a promise. It is so sacred. Amen. It's so sacred. And I said, but what my boys need to know, I said, when, when we make a covenant, when we make a promise, we're to keep it. So daddy's always going to be with mommy. Mommy's always going to be with daddy. Praise Nothing is going to separate Amen. that. Praise Why? Because that builds up confidence in the promise. Amen. Likewise with God, God says, I'll always have you. I'll always keep you. I'll always take care of you. Maybe not the way you think you need to be taken care of right now. But don't, don't worry about it. Just trust in my word. I will always bring you through it. Amen. I'll always bring you through it. The requirement of faith or confidence in God is not arbitrary. It's not arbitrary. It's, it is the same thing. It's just what we require of our children. It's what we require of our spouses. It's what we require of our friends and our uh, acquaintances as the in indispensable condition of our being pleased with them. Amen. For the sinner and for the unbeliever this morning, duties of religion or following religious rites and sacraments are not accepted without the divine spirit. Amen. Jesus told Nicodemus, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Amen. Ye must be born again. Because there is that lacking which makes them a sweet savor to God. What's, what's making them a sweet savor to God? What is lacking? Remember in the, uh, the Old Testament, there was a holy oil that was to be made for the incense. Yep. And that holy oil was never to be repeated uh, after that time. Uh, but that holy oil for the tabernacle was to be made of uh, several spices and ingredients. And it was a, a perfume of some sorts. Uh, now if any of those spices had been left out of what God specifically said to make those spices of. And to bring that all together and mix it all up. If any of those things had been left out. It would have not been pleasing to God. Amen. Absolutely. The unregenerate man, the unbeliever, those without Christ, leaves out the chief of his duties, and that is faith. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please him. Faith lays hold on Christ, and so is accepted. Amen. In like manner for the Christian to leave out the chief spice of faith in our daily lives is to leave out any possibility of pleasing God. Amen. Pleasing God is only attainable where there is sure faith. 
The Bible says in Romans 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. Faith is that which alone obtains acceptance with God on behalf of the Son, his Son, Jesus Christ. The one who comes to God must believe two things. Let's finish the verse. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the one who comes to God must believe two things. Number one, that he exists. Amen. And second, that he rewards those who diligently seek him. It's, it's not merely that God exists for the sole purpose to be a rewarder. That's not the sole reason he exists. Amen. But that he will prove himself to be a rewarder of that person who diligently seeks him. You know, um, uh, I, I think of uh, my wife and... Uh, uh, when she gets on a topic or wants to learn something like uh, like canning, for example, in 2020, she wanted to learn canning. So she's doing all this research, digging out, getting books and all these different things, and she's doing it just like that. And I'm like, I can't do that. I can't, I, can't, I can't just pick up something and then just start doing it. But she had faith because what the book said was true. Amen. And and, 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 and and we take that and, 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 and we, you know, and if we're, she's diligently seeking for that, it's going to come to fruition. It's going to prove faithful. Why? Because of the tried and true testimony of the people in the book. The same thing with God. God says, you want to believe? I'm going to show you that I'm a rewarder. But you have to diligently seek me. Yes. But you have to really want me. It's not like, okay, God, I'm with you a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the world. I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of in the world. I'm kind of with you. God says, no, no, no. Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. Amen. And since God never moves, and we move, we can get this far away from God. Say, I want to draw nigh to God, and I'll draw nigh to you. And here we are. Amen. God says, you, wanna, you, wanna, you, you, you know that I'm real. Obviously, you believe in me, but you need to diligently seek after me. Amen. Uh, apart from faith in God, is it, it is impossible to please him in any way mm -hmm. in our Christian lives. And God is not impressed with our education. God is not impressed with our financial worth. God is not impressed with our status in society. God is not impressed with our vehicles. God is not impress, impressed with our hairdo or lack thereof, but is looking for our faith in him. Yes. That's what God approves of. That's what is pleasing to God. That's what God wants. Amen. That's what God wants. <clears throat> Faith believes in God and puts the commands of God to work. Well, I, wh why are you doing it that way? Well, this verse in the Bible says so and so, and it worked for so and so and so and so, so I'm just going to try it like so. <laughs> I hope that made some kind of sense. Real, genuine faith is active. Amen. Is active. To believe the facts and then to act upon, like the man sitting in the chair. I can tell you all day that I believe that chair will hold me up, and I believe, and I believe, and I believe till I'm blue in the face. But if it, how do I prove to you that I really believe that chair? i got to sit in it. Amen. And it's the same with God. It's the same with faith. I can say, oh, I have faith in God. I have great faith in God. That's the whole thing with James 2. It says, you say you have faith, but you ain't doing nothing. You, you, the works that you, you're not having any works. That, that works lead you to uh, righteousness. But that now that I'm saved, I have works and I do works because I am saved. Amen. Because I want to serve the Lord. And I'm, and I'm proving him faithful and he's rewarding me. Why? Because I'm diligently seeking him. Amen. <laughs> because I want him to be the Lord of my life. And so faith is the key that unlocks the blessings of God. Faith is the key that unlocks the blessings of God. Amen. Faith is the key that unlocks the blessings of God. It really is. Faith is to believe in the character of God as he has revealed himself in his works, as he's revealed himself in his word, and in Christ. And God becomes the um, intimate companion of all those who walk by faith. Amen. Why, what, what did Genesis 5 say? That Enoch walked with God, and right, he was translated and took up into heaven, right? Uh, the, the old saying goes that Enoch was walking with God, and one day God looked at Enoch and says, Enoch, you know, we're closer to my house than your house. Why don't you come with me? He says, okay. <laughs> right? Why don't, you just, why don't you just come with me? We're already here. Why? Because that was pleasing to God. Amen. The intimacy, and we should be intimate with the Lord, amen? God amen. becomes the intimate companion to all those that walk by faith. Amen. Why? Because if you're an intimate, uh, 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 come here, Ephraim. Just, yeah, hold on to your Bible. Or just set your Bible down. Come here. 
if me and my son want to be uh, intimate related, intimately uh, close, we're going to be like this, right? Or I'll take my son and out. Oh, man, I should have got Ambrose. <laughs> You're too stiff. Come here. There we go. Look at that. If I want to be, if I want to show my son love, give me a big hug. Don't be stiff. All right, listen up. There you go. Oh, yes, I love you. Oh, just push my body into your body. Feel it. Feel my love. All right, that's intimate, right? Now, I want my son to be up here. Okay? Don't sit on my high gun. Son, I, I mean, he's like a little mannequin or a little what do you call it? Then two of us. I can say I, I want to be. I'm I'm so intimate uh, with my son, and I, I I love to have companionship with him. I really love to have him. Right, and I'm over here on purpose playing my video game. I love my son so much. Do you feel love? Can you feel me hugging you? No, but I mean, yeah, I get it. Daddy's gone. He has his things. He needs some space. But when I want to be close, I, I need to be close. Amen. Right? And, and, and with God, we can say, well, God, I'm, I'm just going to walk on this path. God says, but you left me back here. God says, you left me back here. Why, why, why don't you want to go to the place that I want to go to, that I have showed you for? All right, I, want you, I want to take you on. Well, God, you know I love you, but, but you're not being intimate with God. You're not walking with God. You're not being close with God, right? Being close with God, I mean, I guess this would be different here, right? If I, relax, dude. He's like, I don't want it. <laughs> if I want, this is how we're going to be, right? When you see, um, oh, like he's jealous. Come here, come here, little boy, right? If we're, come on up here, Everett. I'll use you because he's getting a little anxious. Here, if I want to be, if I want to be happy with my son and we want to walk, right, we hold hands. Right? Everybody see a new couple like that or a new married couple? <laughs> Older couple, you're like, oh my goodness, man, why don't you get out here? Right? But if, I want, if, if I'm intimate and I want to uh, uh, walk with someone very closely, I'm going to hold his hand. Amen. I'm just going to hold his hand. We're like, hey, let's walk around. Everyone's like, I'm going to do this every Sunday. <laughs> and, 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 and we're having intimate fellowship and we're talking and we're having fun. All right, go sit down with mommy. Love you. Good job. Um... <laughs> And so the intimate, God becomes the intimate companion of all those who walk by faith. Amen. Because if we're walking by sight, I don't need God. Amen. If I'm walking by sight and what I can see, I don't need God. But if I cannot see the way, uh, if, then I need God. Right? Yes. I'm trying to think of the song. Me and my mom sang it several years ago. Um, uh, I can't remember how it goes. But it's basically... Um, I can only trust in you alone. Like, you, you have to take me on this road. You have to hold my hand, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Amen. Right? And, 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 and I can only have intimacy when I'm walking by faith. Amen. If I'm walking by sight, and it's all in my own power, and I have my own plan, and I got my reserve account, and I can do all this, then God's not pleased. Amen. But what God is pleased with if you say, Father, I want to go where you want me to go. Amen. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to do what you want me to do. And God says, that I like this. This is what pleases me. Right? You know, when, when I was a kid and um, I, I would kiss my dad on the cheek or whatever, he says, I hope you always kiss me. I say, I'll always kiss you. Because my, my older sister is two years older than me. Uh, we were at the mall and she was, I don't know. Whenever a girl stops kissing her daddy, I don't know how old that is. I hope that doesn't happen to me and Nora. But um, uh, she didn't want to kiss my dad in public. She said, no, dad, no, I'm not here. And he just got so broken hearted. He's like, oh, my daughter doesn't want to kiss me anymore. And, 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 and oftentimes in our life, we'll say, God, I don't, I don't want to be intimate. I don't want to hold your hand. I want to go on my own path. Amen. God says, well, that's not pleasing to me. Amen. I, 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 can't, I can't reward that because you're not diligently seeking me. Amen. Right? God becomes the intimate companion of all those who walk by faith. Now, Amen. the pine cone. Pine cone. <laughs> Everybody pull out your pine cone. This is the day! <laughs> Pastor's gone crazy. He's gone off the deep end. <laughs> I have no idea how I was going to share this with you guys. So there was a time back in September where pastor didn't come on a Wednesday night. And Brother Mercer wasn't there either, who I thought was going to be there. And people were freaking out. Where, is, where, is, where were you? I was on the mountain. 
and I was getting something from God. And I, do, I, I, I wanted to do that for three years, but I'm going to try and do that every year to get along with God. And um, I was up on the mountain, and um, I was thinking and reading at several books, and obviously the Bible is one of them. You would hope so. And uh, I'm just sitting there. It's day two, and, uh, or maybe it was the end of day one. I don't remember. And um, maybe it was day two. And I'm sitting in my little uh, camping chair, and God says, look at the ground. So I'm looking at the ground. I just pick up a pine cone. And this, was, this was actually the first one I picked up. This one. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this is a pine cone. Who thinks about a pine cone? And so God starts, you know, I start thinking on some things, just meditating on some things about the life of a pine cone. What in the world? I just laughed. I'm like, God, you brought me up here to look at a pine cone? Like, really? Seriously? And this is what I got, okay? There is a, if you look on the bottom, there's like that little dip or a little, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's, it's a central access. It's like a stem, right? They call it the central access or axis or, or a stem. And that stem runs all the way the length of the totality of the pine cone. Amen. There are scales that ascend and go up the pine cone. You may have one like this where you don't, it's not very perfect. It doesn't have all the scales on it. That's fine. I'll give you another one. That's oh, a nice one. Me too. Uh, <laughs> and they're, they're very numerous. There's not just one scale. There's a lot of different scales. There's a, there's a bunch of them. You, I mean, I'm, sit, I'm sure you can sit here and count them all, which Tristan's probably already doing right now. Just kidding. Wait, wait, I don't even know where he is. But anyway, you, you can look at there. And, and, and for the sake of illustration, I'm not going to give you all the technical terms about this pine cone. Than what I ever just told you, the central axis. That's all I can remember in the scales. But I want to show you how important this little pine cone is. This little pine cone is you. You're like, that's it? This little pine cone is you. It represents your life. Mm -hmm. the, the little stems that, that I, I kind of, the only way that I can explain is to use one of the ugly ones. These little stems that form, if everybody can see this, these little stems that form up here make these little um, scales, All right? So every little pine cone, if you kind of look underneath, you'll see like it, everything's attached to that central stem. And those little um, stick things, whatever you call them, I, I don't remember the name, are, are, are forming that scale, all right? And so those little sticks, those little uh, pokey things, and I know this isn't very pretty, but if you, if you see up here, every little stick thing is coming from the central axis, which is your life. Mm -hmm. In your life, you are going to have trials. You are going to have challenges. You're going to have difficulties. You're going to have things that you are needing to go through because God wants you to go through them. Amen. And as you can tell on this certain pine cone, there are a lot of them. Maybe on yours you can't tell because it's fully done, but I mean, if you look or you break one off, you'll be able to see the little stems, the little pokey things. And, and, and you say, okay, well, that's good. I, I get it. I, I, I understand that that's my life. And uh, on, on some, you know, there's more than others. Not everybody has the same, right? Just like the, not everybody has the same size. Why? Because we're all different. Amen. We all have different walks of life. And on this little pine cone, uh, it is different and it, we all go through this beautiful gift of life Amen. and this wonderful journey together with God as he saith, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee right mm -hmm. and so now you can tell that um, some of them the scales are missing some of them are there uh, one like this is really beautiful I mean there's a few missing here or there but generally it's all complete it's 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 almost about there it's all done and uh this, that, and the other. In the hard shell, the casing happens when you are trusting God by faith, and each little um, little frill here comes together to form that hard shell, and that is what I deemed as that's that's trusting in God, that's faith. That's really weird to explain this. You guys are like, I don't know what you're thinking of there. You're thinking mushrooms or what? Um, but your those little scales are what are completed through those trials and create that scale and it's beautiful Amen. like literally when i was up there what do you do with a, you chuck a pine cone right you kick a pine cone you hit a pine cone with a bat 
Who thinks about a pine cone? <laughs> what is a pine cone? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, but then God showed me these things. And the Bible says that um, the just shall live by faith, and we walk from faith to faith. And it, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. So these, um, when you're going through a trial, and you're, you're going through these trials, it, um, it, it starts to form a little bit of that scale. And you go through another trial, and, and it forms a little bit of scale. When you're trusting God by faith, that's when the scale forms. Amen. When you're not trusting God by faith, this is what you get. But when you're trusting God by faith, it, it forms a complete scale. And it's, it's, it's going to take time and, and where we have to go through much trial and tribulation after the kingdom of God. When we, get trust, when we get tested, when we get tried, when we get put in the furnace, and we trust God through it, the scale grows. And the more scales there are on the pine cone, the more scales there are on you, the more glory it gives to God. Amen. Interesting. When we, the scripture says, uh, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Yeah. When we try to work out our own deliverance, when we try to work out uh, a situation in our own power, in that difficulty, instead of trusting God by faith, the result is, is that we lose food for faith. Amen. Instead of taking the spiritual food, I'm going to take the physical food. And that doesn't bring much glory to God. Even even when you hold this, you're like, "Man, this is nasty." It's good. But this, you're like, "Oh, it's not too bad." But that's that's pretty to look at, right? That's something you would put on your mantle at home if you had a fireplace during Christmas time, right? You don't want this one. So what is that garbage? Not that God's going to reject you, but this life is not pleasing to God. What's pleasing to God is a life of faith. Amen. Right. Hmm. Interesting. Some of the ones that you may have may have some missing like that one, and it's not very pretty to look at. It's not very uh, meaningful or impactful to look at. You're like, I'd rather just turn it and look at the good side. Right? But God sees our life as a whole. Amen. God sees our life. He knows our heart is what I'm getting at. Amen. They're, they're a, they are a reminder when we have some like this. They're a reminder that there was a lack of faith in God during that trial, during that challenging time, during that period. This doesn't glorify God because we're not looking to him for strength. We're not looking to him for deliverance. We're not looking to him for guidance by faith. And, and, and notice that all those scales, as I said before, are connected to that central axis. And that stem, that central axis, whatever you want to call it, is you. But really, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Well, what do, you, what do you mean? Because I had to write this all down. I, I would have forgot. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything we do by faith is connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It, it stems, pun intended, from a trust in God to glorify him. Not to just get me out of the situation, I'll trust you. No, no, no. God's going to work you through that Amen. as you trust in him, as you bring him glory through the situation or the trial, the circumstance, so that it's not about you. It's not how about people view you. It's not about how you know great or how terrible or how insufficient you are. It's how great and good and sufficient he is Amen. when we go through the trial. And we know that all things work together for good to them who are the, who, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. We know that He has our best interests at heart, and that he'll, He won't steer, He will never steer us wrong. He'll never direct us the wrong way. But because of our stubborn <clears throat> will and our stiff-necked will, we go the wrong way. And, and if you haven't already noticed, the stems are pointing where. Up. Amen. But kind of when they're hanging on the tree, they're going down. But they are pointed up when you're holding it. And why is that? Because without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen. Faith glorifies God. And if we want to see God do some amazing things in 2023, we don't. We won't have a blessed year if we're putting faith in ourselves. 
We won't have a blessed year if we're trusting in ourselves and our own commitments and our own works of righteousness or whatever have you. We need to put our faith in the Word. Amen. We need to put our faith in the Word. We need to put our faith in the Lord. And God wants to use you this year. God definitely wants to use you this year. This may be the last year we're here. This, today may be the last day we're here. Amen. We don't know when the Lord can come, but Amen. even so, come quickly. Amen. He wants to use you this year to fulfill his work Amen. in his church. The, the chief end of man is to what? Glorify God. Amen. The chief end of man is to glorify God. One of the great ways, and I'm finished, that you and I can glorify God in 2023 is to put our faith in him. Amen. Have faith in thee in 2020. Let's Amen. pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father,